All right, hey everyone, welcome to Nga yet again for the first time after my Autojun thesis defense, which means, uh, you know, all the big work that I've been doing, all the, the book crafting work that I've been doing, it's finally done. Um, so after that, I moved my computer apparatus from its location in the city to my other more suburban location where I record all my music, if you notice the drums in the back and whatever. So I figured I'd come here just to first uh, talk about what's been going on with the other language, with Pfthom. Pfthom, there's a few different names for it. I have a real issue with making my languages have multiple names, and I'm probably not going to stop doing that. We'll see. And I'm going to talk about some various channel things, some some stuff about the future. Sorry if the uh, brightness and contrast is a little bit assaulting. This computer is a very bright screen and I'm in a dark room, so. So, Pfthom, I've done a lot of things with it lately while I wasn't doing auto-tune things. The way Pfthom works with its, uh, its structure and all that, it's very good for poetry and I've already mentioned that and I think some people in the comments said that too. So for the next assignment after that first one, I literally made a poem. It's kind of a love poem. I'm gonna read it out here. I love the south wind. It increases the angle of the newly seen sun. Using its sky, I am seeing your colorful love. Nighttime obscures my sight of you. Why would I desire the north? All right, so that in thumb is fufaf vitha. I'm just, I'm gonna I'm gonna start over. This is kind of hard to pronounce, but it's still a good language. All right, fufa leith. Fufa, litha, pimfa. And one more time for the boys in the back. Fufa, vitha, fai fif, pumfa, pupubi. Pirpav, rifwa, mfi, thufa, wahu, imfu. Waima, prothvav, imfa, iru, rifib. Fufa, litha, pimfa. Very wispy. And honestly, the language is meant to be spoken at around that speed, maybe a little bit faster with people who can actually speak that phonology bilabial. And that was by design. I think it's cool. I think it's fun and I think it's really good for making poetry. And in the written language, which, you know, I've made, but I'm going to write out all these poems and stuff in it. It's very cool. So what else have I done? Talked about grammar a little bit. Um, Oh yeah, so I wanted to make some copulas, because the only copula that existed in Autojun was just the pronoun, you know? You could just say, like, uh, you could just say, Nwatya, like, I am happy, that that, ya, you know, the pronoun, pro word, I've explained it many times. That was the only thing that you could make a copula out of. So for this one, that's not possible, that's not a thing. So, I made it so that a few verbs that are very common words, could have their, their uh, main forms, like their third person neutral uh, gender and singular present indicative form would be, you know, able to be compressed and condensed into a way that would make a cool, you know, set of copulas. And so I did. So some of the copulas that we have here, let's zoom in. So some of the copulas we have here are the verb with DD in it, which is also used for the word yes. So the DD to be in like terms of like a ser, like a permanent state of being. Whenever it's said as just the, it is a copular is. Yeah, like this thing is that, you'll use D. Then for the abbreviation of p, p, b, which is to see in its various forms, you get P, which just means look like looks like something that thing looks broken that thing looks frozen then you have which is to be like in terms of like temporary a star kind of situations you have which means feels like this thing like a rock i don't know then you have a which in its conjugated form is the verb to fall you have um which means it happens a certain amount of times, like this thing happens regularly. That kind of copula. Then you have, which is to give, 
but that in its copular form, just me, means it gives the impression of or acts like something. So like that thing, me, a jerk, you know, something like that. So we have a, an example sentence here. We have, that looks like it might be moderately frozen, would be translated as, looks, then we have the verb to freeze, which gets uh, conjugated as an adjective here, to and then uh, DWB, which means something far, which in the nominative case just means that, like that thing, that thing, that person, that whatever. Daiwab. So that thing looks like it might be moderately frozen. Then we have a. Uh, I also talked a lot about politeness, how you can insult someone or compliment someone. So to be nice to someone, you call them baimad or bufmad if it's in the accusative, which literally means like a liked person or a liked thing. Um, then if you want to refer to someone rudely, you'll just call them daiwab or dufwab, which is that thing, you know. Even if you're talking to them, you can conjugate it in the second person singular, like you're talking directly to them, looking in them in the eyes, but you hate them, and you say like daiwab, etc. Um, yeah, and so I did some uh, stuff on sound changes, because there's a lot of sounds that are just like illogical. Even for someone who would hypothetically have this as a native phonology, it's just unrealistic. So a lot of these sounds get turned into geminated sounds. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the velar fricative get turned into a was whenever they're combined with a lot of the bilabial sounds, which is pretty frequent. And then I created a, just a couple basic sound changes so far based on the geography. So here's like the map of their territory. It's not a very well coded map, but it's just like in this area, the inland has its own dialect and then the coastal areas have their own dialect. And so um, a lot of the people who speak along the coast tend to roticize the velar fricative, especially at the beginning of words. So it'll turn into, instead of just ra, it'll be a ra. You know, like, kind of like that. Um, then p speakers further inland will tend to trill the velar fricative at any point in the word. So the ra will turn into a ra. And then um, the speakers further inland will also tend to not geminate their consonants. So a lot of them, not all of them, just kind of sporadically, I haven't figured out the specific rules for that yet, but double consonants will just turn into a single of the consonant. And, uh, yeah, that and the number system. The numbers in in Pitham are base 8. They were based on trying to create loops of rope around a single point, around like a single rock, but then it got turned into writing, and the writing is usually scraped into like a seal leather or narwhal leather, some kind of arctic mammal's leather is its general format of being written. So it's base 8, right? So you have this little swirl that starts here and then goes clockwise around until you have 8, and then you get these bigger loops that are groups of eight. So you have eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64. And then straight lines going outward will be collections of 64 going all the way up to 512. And then these will all be condensed onto one loop. So you see here you have the number 36 because you have eight, 16, 24, 32, plus one, two, three, four. That's the numeral for 36. And then here's all the numbers for them in cardinal ordinal and if they need to be in a noun setting like a threesome etc so like you have feeb meeb weed bead thief meeth khil yeah so mod 8 then 16 mod meeb as in 8 2 right so you got two of those put together 8 2 mod meeb mod read mod bead mod thief mod meeth mod thief Ma, and then you have uh, for 64, once you get onto the even bigger cycles, you have pfam, then you have pfamid, and pfamweed, and pfambid, etc. And then to make it into an ordinal number, like first, second, third, fourth, you add in 
accented e to the end. So if you be, me be, we de, be de, fi fi, me fi, fi li, ma di, ma di me, ma di weed, ma di weed, ma di fi, ma di me, ma di fi, fa me, fa me be, fa me weed, fa me be. And then the noun form is just these is the roots, and then uh, you'll just conjugate for its part of speech in in time. So that's all for fifth thumb right now. Um, I, I have some debates and things that I want to talk about real quick, as in, first of all, um, should I continue uploading videos on Tuesday? As in, I'd like you to let me know in the comment section, would you be more likely to watch this video, or do you think people that you know, or people in general, would be more likely to watch the video if I released it on like a Friday, or a Saturday, or a Sunday, just like any time in the weekend? It Obviously, it technically doesn't matter too much now during the quarantine, but like in general, do you think it would help me and my growth and my re outreach to other people on all the various internet communities if I release the videos towards the weekend instead of on a Tuesday morning because I've been considering that and I could easily do it I could definitely do it especially during quarantine times so let me know about that um, number two I have a lot of ideas coming up for what's coming for the channel ahead um, one I am going to be doing more videos, hopefully with Chris, on more like linguistics of various countries and discussing them and uh, talking about the history of them, etc. I think that would be cool. Um, so that's gonna happen. I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna showcase some of my friends' conlangs from Instagram, so if you have a conlang that you also want to showcase, then uh, send me an email with literally all the information you want on it to ngamail at gmail.com. I'm pretty sure I got that in the description, and if not, then it's in the channel description. So if you want to be a part of that, then, send, then uh, send me an email about that, and I can get to it as time goes on. Um, I'm gonna talk about a couple subjects of historical linguistics. I'm gonna do a couple memes. I've got, I've got some fun ideas in mind. I'm gonna post Autojune's stuff to the Autojune .weebly.com in hopes that, you know, I can show it to uh, my boy Jan Misely and get it reviewed at some point, which would be very lovely. Um, and I'm going to also do something not necessarily related to linguistics, but since I'm also a history nerd, I would like to also make a few documentaries on important figures in Arizona history, considering I'm an Arizonan, and I am a proud Arizonan, and I would like to, uh, you know, show my appreciation and just make some history videos about Arizona. So I know, like, not many of you are going to have like significant ties to Arizona so they're gonna be interesting so I still recommend uh, checking them out as they come along but of course I'm also still doing college even though everything is online so uh, yeah I'm still a little busy but obviously I have more time in front of the computer so that's about all I have for ya so yeah, please uh, let me know what you think about the video release schedule. That would be very helpful if you would leave comments about that. Otherwise, hope you're enjoying my content, and uh, I'll see y'all next time. Agma schwa. Out. Wash your hands. Eu mato um tubo se a pessoa que nem eu já pulo pra mim Não é igual